This video tutorial is intended for informational purposes only. If you modify your hardware as I have depicted in this video, you are doing so at your own risk. I am not responsible for any damages that may result from performing these modifications. Also, if you do watch the tutorial part of this video, please watch it in its entirety. There is a very specific modification that I performed during the tutorial that applies only to my Game Boy Color console. With that in mind, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Kyle, and today I'm super excited to share this video with you finally. Recently on the internet, there's been a lot of interest in backlighting the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Color never originally came with a backlit screen, and so lately the internet has been clamoring to try to figure out how to fit a screen like that into the Game Boy Color. So here is my finished backlit Game Boy Color. Uh, it took me about five hours to work on. I just finished it this afternoon and I wanted to share it with you guys as soon as I could. Uh, so today I'm actually going to show you how to make one of your own. If you want all the backstory to this whole situation, how I came to actually building this, uh, feel free to continue watching. Otherwise, if you want to skip this backstory and you just want to go to the tutorial, I've included a link in the description with a timestamp so you can just fast forward to that part if you want. When I was in Japan a few months ago, I went to the retro game store in Akihabara in Tokyo uh, called Super Potato. And I'll show some footage here of what it looked like inside. Basically, it's the retro uh, video game lover's paradise. I loved it there. They had everything you could imagine. A lot of obscure uh, Japanese-only uh, video games and consoles and just anything else you can think of. While I was there, I picked up an old Game Boy Advance for about 500 yen, which translates to $4.50. This thing was dirt cheap. It had a damaged screen, but everything still worked. You could still see stuff on the screen. Um, everything worked fine. I had thought about building a backlit Game Boy Advance console uh, for quite a while. I wasn't too keen originally on cannibalizing a fully working, perfectly fine Game Boy Advance. And so uh, when this opportunity came up to purchase this one, I jumped on it. Um, it wasn't guaranteed that it would actually work, uh, but I purchased some batteries uh, at another store close by and I tested it that night and lo and behold it actually worked and booted up some of the games that I also uh, bought at Super Potato. So this got me interested in the Game Boy Color, uh, for which until recently, within the past few months or so, there weren't any mods that would allow you to backlight the screen, and so I was going to try to figure out how to do that. The Game Boy Color screen is reflective and mostly opaque, so that it can reflect from light sources that are in the room around you, and it doesn't allow easily for actually placing a backlight source behind the screen itself. There is a method to light these screens called front lighting, which is basically a clear, transparent panel that you put in front of the display and you run a light through it and basically it lights the screen from the front. The only problem with this is that the image looks relatively washed out and it's just not ideal. A lot of people on the internet have tried doing this and while the method does work, it's just, it doesn't look that fantastic. That's where the Game Boy Advance SP comes into the picture. The Game Boy Advance SP came out after the original Game Boy Advance. Uh, the first generation of it had a front lit screen, so it was done relatively well. Uh, games were playable, they looked great. You could actually see stuff when you're in the dark. Um, it was a really neat idea from Nintendo. The neat thing about this is that Nintendo actually released a second generation of the Game Boy Advance SP handheld that used a backlit screen. This is the AGS 101 uh, LCD screen. Uh, it looks fantastic. It's very crisp and clear and it's actually still in production today because the modding community is just nuts about this. Uh, people love using it in backlit Game Boy Advance mods. It's super popular for that. Now back to the Game Boy Color. Recently there was a listing on the uh, merchant website in China called Taobao. It's basically a Chinese eBay. There's actually a person on there who was selling modified Game Boy Colors using a specially made mini IPS screen. Now naturally, when the internet found out about this, they went nuts. Uh, apparently, from what I've heard, there were uh, over 2,000 orders that were submitted to this one person to make these. About 20 of them were actually produced and sold, 
and rumor has it that the guy actually got sick and orders were no longer being fulfilled. Fast forward a few months and a guy by the name of Ben Venn, who's an active modder in the handheld modding community, he actually created a prototype of a adapter cable to take the AGS-101 screen from the second generation Game Boy Advance SP and put it into the Game Boy Color. This adapter ribbon cable actually translates the signal coming from the Game Boy Color's main board so that it can work with the AGS-101 screen. Late one night, about a month ago, I was looking on the internet and I stumbled into Ben Ben's page where he was actually selling these adapters. I purchased one for $43 and then shortly after that, they actually went out of stock. And to this day, they are actually still out of stock everywhere, both on the retro modding website and on Ben Ven's page as well. Luckily, Ben Ven's website and the retro modding website are currently selling custom made to order Game Boy Color units that are already finished with this backlight mod. So if you're interested in purchasing one of those consoles, instead of doing the mod yourself as shown in this video, I'll put a link in the description below to their store pages. Now we're to the fun part of the video, the tutorial, where I'll actually show you how to make one of these units yourself. Now please keep in mind, on Ben Venn's own store page for the adapter ribbon cable, it says that it is experimental. He of course has thoroughly tested this adapter and is confident of it working and doing what it's supposed to, otherwise he wouldn't sell it. Mine specifically actually had a defect in it that uh, caused the backlight to not power correctly. When I first received my ribbon adapter in the mail, I sat down and did a trial run of this mod just to see how it would work before I actually filmed it. And unfortunately, I noticed that I was having problems with it. It wasn't keeping the backlight powered on and it was just acting really funny. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to. Now the image did stay on the screen. I could see it on there still. It was just really dark because the backlight wasn't working. I did order my adapter cable from Ben Venn's own site, but Retromodding actually was the company that fulfilled my order and sent it to me. So I contacted them for help with this and they put me in touch with Ben Venn himself on Facebook where he actually helped me to figure out what was wrong, what was broken, how to bypass, uh, the power relay for the backlight, uh, which it ended up being a problem with the cable, thankfully, uh, but I was able to get around it. Keep this in mind as I go through this tutorial because I'm going to point out specifically what I did to fix this. You won't need to do this slight modification during the install process unless you have the same exact issue that I did, which I'll actually talk about and tell you how I diagnosed it and was able to find out that it was the problem. Now before you start this mod and crack open your Game Boy Color, there are some tools and items that you'll need to actually complete this. These are the tools you'll need. A soldering iron, a rotary tool, a hot glue gun, electrical tape, a pair of wire strippers, rosin core solder, flux, 26, 28, or 30 gauge wire, scissors, a razor blade or utility knife, and AA batteries. You will also need a small Y-Wing screwdriver, which you can order on eBay for a few dollars, and a small Phillips head screwdriver. Now for parts, you will need an AGS-101 LCD screen, which is about $50, a Game Boy Color handheld, mine cost me about $26, and a replacement Game Boy Color screen lens, which was about $4. All three of these parts can also be found on eBay. You will also need Ben Venn's AGS-101 adapter ribbon cable for the Game Boy Color. In this video, I am specifically using version 2.0 of his adapter. Ben Venn did make other versions of this adapter, each with their own specific soldering and installation requirements, so make sure that for the purposes of this video, you are using version 2.0 of the ribbon adapter. You will also need some Game Boy or Game Boy Color games to test with. Begin by taking out the screws from the back of the console. There are a total of six Y-Wing screws, four in the upper half of the unit, and two under the battery panel.
Once you have those removed, then you can simply lift off the back part of the handheld's plastic housing to reveal the main board. Next, you want to take your Phillips screwdriver and remove the three small Phillips head screws that are on the lower half of the board. Also remember to remove the plastic power switch on the side and the IR shield on the top so that you don't lose them during this process. Next, you will need to unlatch the plastic clamp at the top of the unit, which is holding onto the screen's ribbon cable. To do this, use your screwdriver to lightly pull up on the left and right tabs on the clamp, but be careful not to scratch anything on the board. Once it is unlatched, the easiest way to remove the ribbon cable is to gently slide your screwdriver all the way underneath it and pull up to disconnect it. After that, Gently lift the board away from the front of the plastic housing. Next, you can install your adapter ribbon into the same slot where you just unplugged the Game Boy Color's original screen from. Remember to be gentle with the ribbon cable. It doesn't take very much force to get it to insert fully into the slot. After it is inserted, then push back down on the left and right tabs on the clamp to secure it in place. Next, you will need to unsolder the red power indicator LED from the front of the board. I remembered to do this after I had installed the ribbon cable, and I decided not to remove it. However, you should probably carry out this step before installing the adapter ribbon at all. You will use your soldering iron to melt the two contacts shown in red here, and pull out on the LED as you do it so that the LED will release from the board. Next, you will be soldering a wire from the small standalone contact on the ribbon cable to the upper left post on the chip labeled KDS 8.388. Originally, I used a 26 gauge wire for this. However, later I changed to a smaller 30 gauge wire so that it would save some space inside the case. Here's the chip that you're soldering to. And here's what it looks like afterwards. Please note that the step you are seeing right now with me taking this knife to the Game Boy Color's board is not required for the AGS 101 screen mod. This separate mod is called the Pin 3 Sound Chip Mod which fixes the buzzing and hissing feedback that comes from the Game Boy Color speaker when it is powered on during normal gameplay. I won't cover this mod in detail right now because it is extremely tricky and risky to perform. However, I figured that I would include this footage anyways just to show you that such a modification exists. Here's what the mod looks like afterwards. Next, I will briefly cover the issue that I had with my adapter ribbon and the AGS 101's backlight. There is a flaw in my adapter ribbon that caused an issue with the continuity between the resistor labeled R1 on the ribbon itself and the screen's backlight circuit. Ben Venn tested all ribbon adapters after he received them from the manufacturer and before they left his care. However, the issue with my ribbon adapter was not fully realized during this testing because it took me fiddling with it to fully break the already weak connection between the screen and resistor R1. So once this fully broke after I played with and tested the ribbon for a while, the screen itself would remain on and still display an image, however the backlight itself would no longer power on. So to determine what the issue was, Ben Venn first had me test the voltage between the negative battery terminal and resistor R1 while the handheld was powered on. This test is to make sure that this specific circuit did not burn out on my Game Boy Color's board. According to Ben Venn, the voltage I should see on the circuit while it is under load from powering the backlight should be about 14 volts. Since mine was not powering the backlight at the time, mine kicked out about 30 volts, which he said was normal. At any rate, the point was proven that the problem was thankfully not with my Game Boy Color. Next, he had me check continuity between resistor R1 on the ribbon and the inner one of the two leads on the back of the LCD screen while the screen is plugged into the ribbon. 
mine showed no continuity, so I quickly soldered a wire between the two contacts and my backlight finally powered on. And thankfully, it stayed on too, and never once flickered no matter how much I moved it around. Please remember that unless you are experiencing this exact same issue with your ribbon cable and screen, you do not need to perform any of the aforementioned tests, nor do you need to run the bypass wire to power the backlight, since it should already stay powered on just fine via the ribbon adapter alone. Now we will be working on insulating the handheld. Note how I have placed electrical tape over the aluminum panel on the back part of the console's housing. It's also a good idea to insulate the ribbon adapter's integrated circuit, contacts, and resistors, as well as all of your soldering work with electrical tape. This will also help hold everything in place. You should also flip over the main board and insulate the backside with electrical tape too, since this is what the new screen's aluminum housing will be sitting on once everything is installed. After you've finished that, I want to show you something interesting on the back side of the Game Boy Color's main board. This little dial is a potentiometer, which is used to adjust the contrast on your display. Use your Phillips screwdriver to turn this clockwise as far as it will go. Otherwise, your new backlit screen may not function correctly, and there could be unwanted artifacts that appear on screen during gameplay. Once you've made that small adjustment, go ahead and test out your system and see how it works. Here I used my screwdriver to complete the circuit with the batteries so that the system will power on. Let's move back to the housing now. You will now want to remove the Game Boy's original reflective LCD screen. To do this, hold the front housing with both hands and gently twist it to release the screen from the adhesive that is holding it in. Do this a few times to loosen it up, and then stick your finger underneath the corner of the screen and lift it very gently from the adhesive. Once you've done that, the rest of it should come away from the plastics pretty easily. By now you've probably noticed that I'm using the original plastic enclosure from my Game Boy Color. I've done this to retain a feeling of authenticity when using the handheld, although you can purchase aftermarket plastic enclosures off of eBay for around $10 to $15 per kit. I wanted to mention this option for all of the purists out there, because this may be something that you want to do, considering that we will be cutting up the plastics for this case shortly in order to make room for the new AGS-101 screen. Here we want to pop out the old plastic screen lens from the front housing so that we can make room for our shiny brand new lens. To do this, just press your thumbs against the backside outer edges of the lens and push firmly to release it from the adhesive. Then just pull it up and off the rest of the way. You will notice a plastic adhesive strip around the inside of the screen area on the back of the housing. Be sure to remove this adhesive strip next so that it does not stick to your new screen when you install it later on. You'll also notice some adhesive residue on the outside of the front of your housing. To clean this, simply rub it off using your finger. In this next segment, we will be cutting out the front housing's plastic framing that I've outlined in red here. This is required in order to install the new larger AGS-101 screen. You will also need to cut the plastic power switch in half lengthwise as I've done here. This part specifically can be done with a knife or razor blade. As for the plastic framing in the housing, it's best to use your rotary tool to carefully cut these plastic pieces out. Remember to go slowly and to wear safety glasses at all times when handling this equipment. By the time you've removed the frame from the housing and flattened it as much as you can, it should end up looking something like this. Please remember to go slowly and take your time when doing this. I ended up getting a little too adventurous with my rotary tool, and I cut a hole straight through the volume indicator area on the plastic housing. Now you can begin the process of test fitting everything together. This may take some trial and error, and you may need to do some additional trimming to get everything to fit just right.
As you can see from my experience, the Game Boy Color's main board wasn't exactly sitting flush against the back of the screen in relation to the edge of the front housing just yet. To even further demonstrate this point, you can see how the contacts for the extension port on the side of the board were preventing the housing from fully closing. So given this situation, I very carefully used my rotary tool to flatten those contacts on the board, while trying not to damage any part of the board itself. I did end up scraping the board between the contacts a little bit, but I don't believe that this has caused the port to stop functioning properly. Additionally, I decided to remove the front part of the aluminum housing on the AGS-101 screen that I was going to be installing in the unit. You can use a razor blade to release the plastic tabs that hold both the front and back aluminum pieces of the screen together, but be very careful not to damage any part of the display itself. Also, the back cannot be removed without damaging the screen, but at least the front can be removed so that you can save a little bit of width occupied inside the console's housing. In my opinion, doing this helped make everything fit together so much easier. Next, position and straighten the screen exactly how you want it. You may want to turn your handheld on once or twice during this process to make sure that the area of the screen is lining up evenly. At this time, you can begin moving everything where you want it. In my case, I hot glued my backlight wire where I wanted it and trimmed away the excess hot glue with a knife, being careful not to damage the ribbon adapter or wire. After that, you can begin replacing the buttons and rubber membranes in the front housing. Then put the main board in place, adjusting where the ribbon cable is behind it, and then securing the board down with screws. Remember to only use the outside two Phillips screws to secure the board down to the front of the case. Do not use the center one because it could damage part of the ribbon cable for the new screen. Here is my handheld with my backlight wire glued out of the way and right where I want it. Now put two dabs of hot glue in the upper right and upper left inside corners between the top edge of the housing and the screen to secure the screen in place. Now take your back panel and reinstall the IR sensor cover and your newly trimmed power switch cover into the back part of the housing. Make sure that the switch on the main board is in the down off position and move the trimmed plastic power switch cover in the down position as well so that they both line up when you bring the two halves of your handheld together. Now is the point of no return. Put down some fresh hot glue on the inside upper part of the back housing. Make sure that your glue gun has had time to get hot enough so that it gives you some extra time to fit everything together and make sure it all lines up correctly.
Then push the two halves of your console together and hold them together for a minute or two while the hot glue inside the unit cools and cures. Afterwards, replace only the two Y-wing screws in the battery bay, since the other four originally in the top half of the housing can no longer be screwed in because their space is now occupied by the new larger screen. After you've completed that, pop in your favorite game, power on the console, and take it for another test drive. Before you install the new lens cover, you want to clean any dust and smudges from the screen's surface. It's best to use a microfiber towel for this part. Then take your new plastic lens, remove the wax paper protecting the adhesive from the back of it, line it up with the front of the Game Boy, and lay it firmly in place, making sure to press every part of its outer edge against the console's housing so that it adheres properly and completely. After that, all that's left is to remove the plastic film from the screen lens and replace the battery cover. And there you have it! You have your own true backlit Game Boy Color handheld now. This comparison should speak for itself. Seeing how the old, original Game Boy Color screen looks compared to your new backlit screen. These end results are definitely worth the effort. I want to thank you all again for being here. This was my first ever video tutorial here on YouTube, uh, so I hope it was helpful to you in actually creating your own backlit Game Boy Color. If you have any questions about this mod, you can leave a question in the comments section below. I'll do my very best to answer your questions. I'm not the best at this stuff. I don't know electronics as well as I should, but I will do my very best to help you. I also would like to personally thank Ben Venn again for his help. He was a huge help in this situation when I thought that I had purchased a lemon. Um, I was very disappointed when I found out that my ribbon cable wasn't working right, but he rescued me in the end and he was able to help me figure out what was wrong with my adapter, and it helped make this video possible. Please leave a like if you liked the video, leave a dislike if you hated it. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Thank you again so much for watching. Please keep an eye out for more videos coming up in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next one.